Welcome to the Sharp Academy and the Sharp App. I am Statsational John Alicia here with you going over today the Pythagorean expectations in the NFL specifically. Now, I know some of you are going to be hearing about Pythagorean and start getting flashbacks to high school, maybe failing a geometry test, but don't worry about it. I've got you covered here. We're going to go over what the calculation looks like and even do the calculation for you so you don't even have to do all that complex math yourself. Bill James first came up with the Pythagorean expectation for baseball. It was a way that he was going to figure out what would the expected wins be of a team that scored X amount of runs and gave up X amount of runs, and it proved to be quite beneficial. Now, since that time, the formula has been adjusted to accommodate a variety of sports, NFL being one of them. The formula for the NFL looks like this. Points four to the 2.37 power divided by points four to the 2.37 power plus points against to the 2.37 power. You take that number, you multiply it by the number of games. And in this case, we are now at 17 games in the NFL schedule. That's going to let you know what your expected win total is based on the points for and points against. Now, if you look at any team from last season and apply this formula, you'll be able to see exactly who outperformed or underperformed just based on their points for and points against. I did all the calculations for you guys from each team during the 2021 regular season only, and then I compared that to their actual win totals from last year. Okay, so here's a chart of each team and I sorted it by the differential between their Pythag win percentage or the Pythagorean win expectation and what they actually won. The positive difference is going to be teams that actually won more games than they were expected to. And then that's going to go all the way down to the team that won fewer games than they were expected to win. Right at the top, we've got the Raiders with a 3.1 win differential over last season. They won 10 games last year. The Pythag win percentage was 6.9. That was the expectation. So let's call it seven wins was expected. That is telling us that the Raiders were an extremely lucky team. If we go all the way down to the bottom, you can see the Patriots. They were expected to win 12.4 games and only won 10. So just from this calculation, we're looking at the Patriots being a team that maybe was a bit unlucky last season. Now, how can we use this going forward? You want to look for teams that both were extremely lucky last year and extremely unlucky last year to potentially get closer to where they should be in expectation this year on their win total. So you could use this as a bet on futures. Also, just going into the first two or three weeks of the season, you may be able to catch a good price on some of these teams who should not have been as good or were worse than thought of last year. Now, the points for and points against don't tell the whole story. Obviously, there's some luck involved, but one of the aspects of luck is turnovers. Now, turnovers are not entirely luck. A lot of that's going to depend on your quarterback, right? So the quarterback who gives up a lot of interceptions is going to generally be on a team that had a very low turnover differential or even a negative turnover differential. That's going to attribute to some of the wins and losses Let's take a look at the 2019 Tampa Buccaneers. You'll see they scored 458 points that year. They gave up 449 points. Without even doing the expectation calculations, you know that they would have been expected to win about eight games on a 16-game schedule. But doing the calculation, we get 8.2 and 7.8 as their expected win-loss totals for that year. Then we look at how many wins they actually had. They were a 7-9 and nine team. So we could just look at that and say, you know what, this is a team that could potentially be better this year than they were the year prior. Now, if we dive even deeper into that and start analyzing the turnover numbers, this was a team with a ton of turnovers. Winston threw 1.9 interceptions per game. The next closest team was at 1.3. They were by far the worst team in the NFL. Fast forward to 2020, Tom Brady joins this team, and Tom Brady in 2019 threw 0.6 interceptions per game. That is a difference of 1.3 interceptions per game. We know in the NFL, each turnover is worth about four points. So if Tom Brady could come in and throw just 0.6 interceptions per game, as he did in the previous season, we can expect on a per game basis, 
this team to be 1.3 times 4 points better, which equates to 5.2 points per game. Now, some of those points are going to show up on defense, some on offense. You're going to throw interceptions in the red zone, costing yourself points. You're going to throw interceptions down on your side of the field, and you're going to give up points. So let's just say that we give two points to the offense and two points to the defense for each differential in turnovers. There's going to be 21 fewer interceptions if we base it on the numbers of Brady in 2019 and Winston in 2019. There'll be 21 fewer interceptions. That's going to translate to two points each on offense, two points each on defense. That's 42 more additional points scored and 42 less points given up. That gives us 500 total points scored and a 407 points given up in a 16-game season. That equates to 9.9 wins and 6.1 losses on the Pythag win expectation formula. Certain quarterbacks have always outperformed their expectations. And Brady, of course, being one of them, you can almost lock in. He'll get one to one and a half more wins than he is expected to. So we were expecting a 10-6 and six season out of Tampa. Then we know Brady's good for about one more win himself. And sure enough, Tampa won 11 games in 2020 and then went on to win the Super Bowl. Okay, let's open up the original spreadsheet that we had with the Pythag expectation wins, the actual wins, the differential. And then I want to add turnover differential to this because that's going to help us maybe find some situations where a team won more games than they should have or lost more games than they should have. And the turnovers are where we're going to find that story. First, let me talk about the quarterbacks. Green Bay with Rodgers, Tampa with Brady, Kansas City with Mahomes. Those three quarterbacks can account for anywhere from one to one and a half wins a year over expectations. I've seen it year in and year out. You see the Chiefs and the Bucks last year, right about one more win than they should have. That is on par with what I've seen. Green Bay was actually 2.6 games better than their expectation was last year. Now, not all of that can be attributed to Aaron Rodgers. So a bit of that is going to be luck. Maybe a game to a game and a half of those 13 wins could be attributed to luck. Let's take a look of an example similar to what we had with Tampa back in 2019 to 2020. And that is Denver this season with Russell Wilson coming on board. If you look at Denver's numbers, they had an actual wins of seven. They were close to nine on their Pythag expectation. That's a two win differential. So a team that potentially was going to be better than they were last year anyway now gets a Hall of Fame quarterback. So the question becomes, how much is Russell Wilson worth to Denver on a per-game basis? Now, this is something that the sports books, of course, are trying to figure out as well. They've got their numbers. You're going to have to come up with your own. But if you look at the game between Denver and Seattle this year, oddly enough, they do play each other for week one. The line right now is minus four and a half. Denver's favored at Seattle. Now, you're figuring about two points for a home field advantage. So that means they're thinking that Denver is now six and a half points better than Seattle on a neutral field. If you look at last season, they were probably pretty close to being even both of these teams on a neutral site. So what is the factor of Russell Wilson there? Well, it's going to be plus three points or a little over three points to Denver and then minus three to a little over three on Seattle. So about three to four points a game is how we're going to recalculate these numbers just the way we did with the 2019 to 2020 Tampa team. We're going to do the same thing here with Denver. So if we do it on a four point per game basis, I want to give about 75% of those points are going to come on offense. About 25% of the defense is going to get better. So if we take four points a game better over 17 games, that's 68 total points. We're going to allocate 51 of those points to the offense, 17 points to the defense. So we look at last year's numbers. They scored 335 points per game. We'll add in that 51 points. So now they're at 386 points per game. On the defensive side, they gave up 322 points. We're going to take 17 points off of that. And now they're at 305 points. When you run the Pythag expectation formula for this, they wind up with 10.2 wins and 5.8 losses. It just so happens this season, their win total is sitting at 10. So right where we are, that's where the market is at. You look at a team like Dallas, 14 plus in the turnovers. They were best in the league with the Colts. The Colts 
Should have won 10.6 games. They got 14 in the turnover differential, plus 14, and won less games than they were expected to, 1.6 games. It's going to be highly unlikely they repeat a plus 14 in turnover differential, but they've got some wiggle room here from 1.6 differential in what they should have won, which was 10 and a half games. So they could have been a 10 or an 11 win team. Obviously, a lot of that has to do with quarterback. So you're going to have to factor in here as well what you think that change in quarterback is worth for the Colts. Dallas, another team that was plus 14 in turnover differential. They won right about what they were expected to win. But was this team playing a little bit over its head considering that plus 14 again, how sustainable is it? So these are just some numbers that you're going to have to go through on your own. But I wanted to show you guys how to use the Pythagorean expectation formula to calculate the amount of wins we can expect based on what the points for and points against are for any team in the NFL. Appreciate you guys checking out the Sharp Academy video. We've got plenty of other videos inside the app. If you're not watching this inside of the Sharp app, download it. It's absolutely free over at sharp.link or go to the Play Store, App Store, and search for the Sharp app. Good luck, everybody. See you in the next video.